Iman from Cardboard here. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out our tool. Cardboard is a user story mapping and digital whiteboarding tool that allows you and your team to collaborate from anywhere in the world. Let's get into a quick demo so that we can get you up to speed and show you some of the features within the tool. All right, so let's get started. When you first open up the Cardboard application, this is what you'll see. At the top here, you'll see your folders. At the bottom here, you'll see all of your boards. If you haven't had any boards yet, yours will not look this full. You may only have one, you may have none. But down here is where that would be. To create a new folder, to create a new board, just head over here to the left and you'll see the new board, the new folder. You'll see public boards, so all the people in the Cardboard community has created boards here. You can kind of scroll through those and get inspiration for how to build your boards. You can favorite boards in here. To do that, you just head over to the main page and you would hit the star on a board that you want to favorite and then when you click into favorites those boards will be pinned here now. So for the sake of this we won't be creating a new board but if we were to create a new board you'd click into here and you would see all of the different templates here. For this specific demo we're going to use a user story map. If you want to use a freeform canvas to where cards are not locked into a grid, if you want to use an opportunity canvas, business model, maybe an empathy map if you're a designer, whatever you'd like to use you can do that here. You can choose which community this board goes into, whether it's private or public. You can import through a CSV file. Uh, but regardless, either way, you if you are able to click a user story map, open this up. I can name my board. Mm, let's name it Cardboard Demo. Create my board. And now I have a brand new blank canvas to get building on. If we were to head back out, for this example, we're going to use this demo board. And so this demo board, as you can see, it's already been filled out a little bit, but this represents a Lyft customer's experience from the moment they first find and install the Lyft app all the way to the end of the experience. Epics would denote a higher level task that needs to be done. So for example, to create an account, what are some of the fields that you need to create an account on an application? Now we break these down into our user stories, which are more granular explanations for that larger epic. So we need a full name, we need an email, we need a mobile phone number, we need to create a secure password. All of those things are now being built into this epic so that we can figure out what needs to be done and when. If I want to add new cards onto my board, let's say um, entering payment information, I want to pay mm, by an invoice, or I want to send in check let's say they want to pay like that, whatever that is. Um, I can now add these cards simply by just dragging a card onto this board. Or I can right click into the empty space and add or cards that way. If I want to add an image card, here is an image card. So if I want to add an image card, all I would do is just drag this onto the board and then I would add an image card directly into there. And if I were to open up the back of the card, you'll see that the image is larger to where we can now see it. Uh, here we have free text. So all of this right here is free text. Um, if I were to add free text on my board, just drag that on as well. Start typing. I can select it. I can change its color. I can change its boldness. I can underline it. I can italicize it. I can change the font size. All of that can be done with the free text as well. So if there's ever a situation which I want to label, let's say we want to call this release two down here, I can use my free text to do so. We also have background images. So background images work a little bit different than image cards, whereas an image card is the same size and shape as a card. A background image actually goes, as it sounds, in the background of the board. So if I wanted to add meeting notes, let's say I want to create a custom template of something that currently exists, or I want to add a background to my board, I would just add this background image right here, find a file, um, sweatshirt, and now I can post this background image into the back of the page. I can resize the image as well and move it wherever I want it to be. If I want it to be behind a different picture, I can send it to the back, put this one over top of it, or vice versa. We'll go ahead and take this off. Um, some of the that's in, in cardboard as well, all you'd have to do is hit the question mark and it'll open up a new tab with all of our shortcuts here horizontal and vertical dividers. So these are used when you want to sketch out a release. So let's say we have an MVP, a minimum vial product, which is the least amount of features that we can add into a product and still release it to the market 
or I want to add a sprint. And what a sprint is, is typically a two week period to where developers and a business unit's working on the specific priorities or tasks within that section, within that swim lane. I can add horizontal or vertical dividers to slice up my board. And this kind of helps a little bit with organization and prioritization. So now let's open up the back of a card. When you open up the back of the card, you can change the status of the card. You can change the estimates. Let's say this will take five hours of work, or if you're relative to what t-shirt sizes are, this is a medium-sized project. Um, you can all add these estimates into here. You can also change who the card is assigned to. So if specific tasks belong to specific people, you can add those into here, and then the avatar of that person will then show up into the front of the card. It makes it an easy way to visualize what belongs to who. As far as the description goes, this is a section to where you can add text, whether it's small, large, add, add more text here. I can resize this, make it small, I can make it bold, italicize, underline, strike through if it's already done or it's being deleted. I can change the alignment of it. I can add images into here. As you can see here, we've added a lift GIF experience here. This is just an image that's now put into the back of the card. You can pull up the list, you can add hyperlinks, quotes, code. Yeah, we can actually add attachments into these as well. So I can just choose a file here and I can add photos now into here. If there's requirements documents, I can put those in here as well. Any file I can just add into this card so that all of the data or all of the resources necessary to fulfill this card or complete what needs to be done within this card, I can add those files into the attachments here. And I can also have discussions too. So I can say, hey, tag myself or tag my team members if there were any on this board. Hey, quick question. Then I'll get notified down here in the bottom. And I'll also get an email that says that I've been notified or that I've been tagged into a card and I need to check this out. Add annotations of cards. So if there's something that maybe we need more discussion, uh, maybe we don't want to use Apple Pay. So instead of just deleting the card, we can say, hey, this needs discussion. Or maybe a couple of us decided that, mm, I think we should remove this, but let's talk with our whole team first before we do so. You can do that as well. So add custom annotations into your cards as well. So just head up to the settings, choose a file, and for this sake we use the basketball. Let's say we have to play basketball in order to figure out uh, something relative to this card. I can right click the card and add a custom annotation on the card now too. Since so you'll see the basketball now this is on this card. But what are the chances that we actually need to play basketball to do any of this? Slim to none, so let's take that off. Some of the other things we have here as well is we have a mini map. So if you want to pan quickly through one part of your board to the next, you can do that through the mini map. As your boards get bigger and much larger, you may want to quickly get from point A to point B. And when you open your mini map and you do that, that makes the experience a lot quicker and a lot easier. If I want to come all the way down here, here, snap back up to my image card, that will all show up in here. We also have journeys. And what journeys do is they allow you to follow the user's path for a specific scenario in your user story map. And in Cardboard, you visualize these journeys to help bring your user experience to the surface. Um, so let's say that we want to create a happy path. So the shortest amount of time it would take for a customer to open the app and find their app. Uh, let's say they are already signed in, so we'll hold shift down, click use keyboard to type their address. Mm. You know what, let's just say they use their current location for this pickup point. And they confirm their ride, and then they rate their driver. Let's call this one the happy path. We now have a journey that's created within Cardboard. So if I were to click out of the journeys, open this back up, I say, what is the happy path? What's the shortest amount of task it would take for this user to get this experience from start to finish? Click on happy path, 
and then it highlights those specific cards. We also have voting in Cardboard. And with voting, you can vote unlimited by unchecking the box, or you can ration votings and say 20 votes per person. And once you start voting and populating your board with votes, you'll see the opacities of the cards, the hues, you'll see the hues of the cards begin to change. In this case, I've already used up all 20 of my votes, but down in the drawer, they'll be ranked from the most voted to the least voted. And when I close this drawer, you'll see that these cards are still here with the votes on them. Eight being the greatest, six, four, and then two. Now, during voting mode, I can't edit, add, or change anything in the board, but if I would like to do that, all I have to do is stop voting, and now I can move cards around and edit the board again. If I want to reset my votes, hit reset voting, all votes will be removed from the board. Now, adding collaborators is one of the most important pieces of cardboard. We want your teams to be able to work together and build these tools and these projects from anywhere in the world. And to do that, to add a collaborator, you go up in here, click on your avatar, manage your community, and then inside of here, you'll see all the collaborators that currently exist. If I want to add a new one, I simply would just add the email here. Let's add one of my old emails. Add the collaborator into here. And then you'll see that it's now invited. Now, in order for the collaborator to show up as a collaborator that you can now manage, they must accept the invitation. But we'll go ahead and delete this one. Head back into our board. And if I want to add a specific collaborator to this board, just open up collaborators and I can make this viewer or this user a collaborator. So I want to make Jess a collaborator. She's now been invited. When I click inside of the share link, I can now create a link that I can copy and send to users that may not have cardboard access or that may be a member of cardboard, but I don't necessarily need them to edit anything on the board. So they don't need collaboration access. They just need to see the board. I can copy this link, copy it to my clipboard, and I can now send that link around. If there's a situation in which I don't want the link to be there all the time, I can destroy the link here, and the cardboard will now create a new link for me to share with. Now, if I were to hit these changes, this is where our integrations happen. And within Cardboard, we have six different tools in which we integrate with. And one of the most popular happens to be the Jira software. If I were to click into this, it's as simple as adding my instance URL, my username, and then an API token. And once I do that, Jira will now sync in, into my board. If you ever need any type of help, you can click down here on the intercom. Here we'll post some of our most recent blogs. We have a place for you to get a live demo. And if you want to start a new conversation with us, you just hit this here. You type in your response, and now that will pop up in intercom. We'll be notified on our side, and we'll get to your request as soon as possible. You can also download your cards as PDFs. You can download your boards as PDFs, or you can download the CSV files. And this is typically used if you want to back up your board. For those of you that have admin access, you can actually click here and use your reports and you'll see everything that your team and your community has been doing. You'll see how many cards they've been posting on their boards, whether their board is public or private. You'll see how many collaborators are on the board. You'll see the last time that they've logged in, active users, inactive users, and you'll see how many board types they've made. Here you can kind of manage everything and get everything from a bird's eye view to see who's doing what and manage your teams in that way as well. And that's it for the demo. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email myself or the support team at info at or just reach out down below in intercom and we'll be right there to help you.